In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to cash and internal controls. First question, which is not a principle of internal control? One, apply technological controls when applicable. Applicable to a wide variety of situations. Two or B, one person tracks and records assets. C, perform reviews. D, separate record keeping from custody of assets. Or E, divide responsibility for related transactions. So once again, we will read through this and then see if we can eliminate some of the options with the process of elimination. So the question, which is not a principle of internal controls? A, apply technological controls when applicable. Um, that, that seems like something that we would do. I, I would. So we would want to apply technological controls. So I don't think it's that. B, one person track and record assets. Uh, we may we may want to have different people do that. So I'm going to keep that for now as not possibly one of them. C, perform reviews. Uh, that's going to be one of the things that we do do within the internal controls. We're going to have a review process to see that the system is doing what it should or that we are in compliance with the system. D, separate record keeping and custody of assets. Note that B and D are kind of um, opposite of each other in a way, possibly not exact opposites, but I'll keep that for now. E, divide responsibilities for related transactions. And again, that's going to be one of the things we want to do. So I'm going to keep B and D just to compare and contrast the two. If we read this one more time, which is not a principle of internal controls? B, one person track and record assets, or D, separate record keeping for custody of assets. So one is saying that one person should do everything and uh, well, these two procedures and D is saying we should separate and remember that that separation of duties is the one that will be a principle. So we typically want to separate duties, uh, not have an individual do more, more transactions. So at least at the very least, this isn't uh, an objective of, um, of the internal control to have one person track and record assets, whereas it is an objective to separate certain activities, especially custody of the assets versus the recording. So answer then, which is not a principle of internal controls? B, one person track and record assets. Next question, cash equivalents, A, are short-term, highly liquid investment assets. B, include six month uh, cert certificates of deposit. C, include the checking account. D, include petty cash, or E, include the savings account. So once again, if we read through this and use the process of elimination, we're gonna say cash equivalents, either A, are short-term, highly liquid investment assets. That sounds pretty good. B says include six-month certificate of deposits. Now, cash equivalents have to be really liquid. They're really close to cash. If we're gonna have a six-month certificate, probably not short enough it'd have to be less than like three months to be considered i would think for a cash equivalent so i don't think that's going to be liquid enough c says include the checking account now the checking account is basically cash it's not petty it's not a cash equivalent which would be some type of investment which is very uh, liquid but not cash so it's not the checking account petty cash also cash that's going to be cash not a cash equivalent they're going to be they could be grouped together on the balance sheet as cash and cash equivalents, but this would be a cash and not a cash equivalent. Uh, e says includes the saving account, which again is a form of cash as long as we have access to it and we can, you know, there's no restrictions on the savings account, then uh, then it's a highly liquid, typically a liquid uh, account and not and not it'd be part of cash. Cash. So. And this one could be close if there are restrictions on the savings account. But I would think the best answer here is going to be A. A. So if we read this through, cash equivalents are A, are uh, short term, highly liquid investments. That's pretty much the definition of a cash equivalent. Next question The internal control principle that requires that use of pre numbered checks is A, technological controls. B, maintain adequate wet records. C, perform reviews. D, 
establish responsibilities, or E, divide responsibility for related transactions. So once again, we will read through this, see if we can eliminate some of the op options with the process of elimination. The internal control procedure that requires the use of pre-numbered checks is A. Technological control yeah, I don't think it's technological control to have the pre-numbered checks. Uh, B. Maintain adequate records. Uh, that sounds kind of read reason it might help with the maintaining of records. C. Perform reviews. So I don't think the pre-number checks, we could use the pre-number checks in the review, but I don't think that's part of that principle specifically. D. Establish responsibility. Uh, I don't think the pre-number checks establish responsibility, particularly. D or E. Divide responsibility for related transactions. So I don't think that's it either. I think we're I think we're left with B. Maintain adequate records. So if we read through this, we're going to say internal control procedures that require the use of pre-numbered checks is B. Maintain adequate adequate records. So the pre-numbered checks are going to help us to to make sure that um, uh, our our checks it, it helps us to not have uh, fraud or anything uh, within the checks or miss a check that would be recorded because of the number sequencing, sequencing would help us to know uh, if we're missing a check and, and uh, therefore our records would be complete or help to be complete by having that uh, type of internal control of the pre-numbered checks. Next question. Cash includes A. Postage B. Customer checks, cashier checks, and money orders C. Accounts receivable D. Three-year certificate of deposit, or E. Notes. Once again, cash equivalents includes, or cash includes, A. Postage. Now, postage is going to be a, a like a current asset, but it's not, of course, cash or even a cash equivalent, even though it's going to be kind of liquid and that we're going to use it soon. Can't use it to pay our bills, typically, except to pay postage bills. But anyway, B. Customer checks, cashier checks, and money orders. That sounds pretty good. C says accounts receivable. Now accounts receivable is, is gonna be something that we hope to be converting to cash soon, but it's not cash yet. So I don't think that's it. D says three year certificate of deposit. Uh, a, a CD is gonna be a form of investment, but if it's not due for three years, then it's not liquid, it's not even a cash equivalent. So that's not it. And E says notes like a note payable and once again it's not cash uh, that's going that's cash leaving so that's not it's not it so it looks like B is, is going to be pretty much the definition of cash here cash includes or not the definition but uh, a good list of typical cash uh, what cash typically includes cash includes B customer checks cashier checks and money orders